when it comes to self hosting security is like the number one thing we worry about right and when it comes to security what's the main thing that comes to mind you've got accounts right you have a username and a password now remembering these passwords can just become a real pain and this is where the subject of today's video comes in which is pocket id now pocket id will allow you to set up pass keys for your authentication for your app so if you're familiar with like self-hosting authentic or other OAuth idps that you can get out there which are just identity providers now you'll know that you know you can set up a username and password and use that one user let's say i set up a username called nick i can use that across all of my apps that one user across all my apps now what if i told you that we could remove the whole username and password thing and then just use what's called a pass key which could be a touch of a hardware key or the touch if you have like a macbook pro or something or a, a fingerprint reader to authenticate with your apps instead now what does this mean it means that you have hardware protection and if someone wants to authenticate with your apps they're going to need to have physical access to whatever you set up to get into your applications it doesn't get much more secure than that passwords are out and pass keys are in let's jump into this video so this here is Pocket ID. Now this is an instance that I have all up and running. Now I have deployed this via Docker. All the instructions, all the steps to get this up and running will be in the link in the description. This here is TechDocs Docs. This is a web page that I manage and anything I cover, I will have you know detailed documentation. So if you wanna get this up and running, you've got all the steps here. It's a simple Docker deployment. You stand up the Docker environment and away you go. Now I'm going to cover this video as off as if you've just deployed it and then we'll just be setting out from that point on. So we'll be looking at pocket IDs, just, you know, admin page, what we can do. And then we're going to look how we can set it up with Grafana itself, right? As an example for logging in rather than using our username and password, we'll use pocket ID instead. And then I think that will give you a good overview on how it all works. So what we're looking at here is the login screen for the Pocket ID. Now this is the login screen for Pocket ID itself. This is where we can get into the admin panel as you can see here. So I have already set up one passkey. You do this when you set up the initial user. And when I click authenticate, rather than a username and password, we're using a passkey. Now there's many types, uh, different types of ways to authenticate using a passkey. With my MacBook, I have the touch ID. So I can just touch the fingerprint reader that I already have set up and this will authenticate me right and then i could use this authentication methods with grafana and all of my applications as well so you're already getting an idea on how we can use this authentication using pass keys rather than passwords for our applications so let me just show you i'm going to just touch the id now there we go i've just touched the fingerprint reader and it's authenticated and now i logged in there was no username there was no password it knows who i am because of the hardware key that i've just used so this is the admin panel. This is what you're going to look at when we first get into Pocket ID. Now you can see here, it's saying that we have a single pass key configured at the very top. Now the idea with this is we're not using a username or password, right? The, the issue here is we're using physical things like um you know i'm using my macbook's fingerprint reader or you have things like this i don't know if you can see this it's my yubi key so this is what i'm going to set up as the second uh, authentication method what it's talking about here is it's saying that it is recommended to add one or more pass key to avoid losing access to your account so if my macbook broke right which has the thumb reader that was my way of authenticating with Pocket ID and any other application I had configured. I've now lost that method of authentication. So you want to set up two, right? So there's a thumb reader, and what we're going to do now is set up my Yubi key as a second one. So I can log in via my MacBook, or if I've got this Yubi key on any device, I can authenticate, right? So I could keep this on me, or I, uh, I could add a third one, and that's my travel one, and then that's how I could authenticate on the go if I don't have my MacBook Pro. There's other pass key uh, methods as well. There's a bunch out there. Uh, it's definitely worth looking into, but just to cut you the chase, let's set up this one now because that's what it's asking me to do, and then we can cover the rest of what's on here, and then we can go and set this up with Grafana and just see how it works in practice. So I've just plugged the uh, YubiKey back in, and so what we're going to do now is you can see pass keys, right? So I'm using my iCloud keychain pass key. That's what the thumb reader was. So what I can do now is I can go add pass key and it's going, hey, do you want to use the touch ID? Because it's the MacBook's just um, doing that as default. I can click other options here and you can see there's actually a few other ones I can set up. I can use my actual phone. That can be a, a, a authentication method. 
or I can use a security key. And since I have my security key, which is my Yubi key, uh, I can use that one instead. So I'm going to hit that and hit continue. And now it's asking me to insert it, which I have. And now I need to touch it. So I'm going to touch it. And now I I've set a pin on my Yubi key. So I need to put that in. And I hit enter. I need to touch it again to confirm. And we will give this a name. So we'll just call this. Uh, I have a couple of Yubi keys. So I call this Yubi key USB 3. And we'll hit save. And now watch this. Now if I log out, if I want to authenticate, I'm going to touch my YubiKey this time. So see, I can touch the ID, but I have other methods, right? I'm going to do security key this time. All right, so I touch my security key. You can't touch it, but you're just going to have to believe me. I touch it, I enter in my pin, and I'm going to touch it again. Now I've logged in. So this is how it's going to work, not just for logging into Pocket ID's admin dashboard, but for how I log into any application I put, you know, behind Pocket ID as my authentication method. No username, no password, touch a button, away we go. So let's have a quick look at Pocket ID before we go and configure it with Grafana. So we've got the audit log so you can see where the sign-ins have happened for the admin dashboard. This is always good because you want to track who's coming in from where. We can see that these are just local logins, which is fine. We have users here, so we can add more users if you wanted more users to be able to log into. So this isn't logging into the um, dashboard users, right? So if you want to set up other users that want to be able to access your applications, you know, you've got 20 applications you don't want to have to make 20 accounts, right? You don't need to. You set up one account, give them access to those services, and then everything's authenticated via Pocket ID, and then you can log into all of these services. If you're familiar with things like uh, Microsoft, you know how you can use your Microsoft login for a bunch of things, or your Apple login, or your Google login. Same sort of thing, but this is your self-hosted authentication method, right? Which is Pocket ID. So you have your groups as well, and the thing with the groups, this is how you can, you know, assign... Uh, certain applications to groups what group can access what applications within pocket id and this is where we're going to set up our client so this is an oidc client we'll be setting up grafana in here so that that's you know that client which is grafana is being um, linked to pocket id for authentication of course you have api keys so if you ever want to in uh, interact with pocket id via apis you can do that and then if you want to change any of the application configuration of Pocket ID, you can do that as well. You can set up uh, emails, uh, you know, you can set up LDAP. If you want to change any of the images, you know, make it your own, you can definitely do that as well. So I could change this from Pocket ID. Uh, I could call it like TikToks ID. And now let's just see what happens there. And if I hit save, you can see in the top left, it's just changed to, to TikToks ID. So I think you get the idea, right? So what we're going to do now is we are going to set up my Grafana authentication. So at the moment, I'm going to go to my Grafana and I'm going to log out because I'm already logged in here. And you can see I log in via just the default Grafana's login page, right? Which is just admin, uh, sorry, which is just a username and password. So this was just using my password manager. I can log in. Now I was using a username and password there, right? We don't want to use a username and password. We want to use the user I have in pocket ID and I just want to touch my hardware key to log in. So let's set that up. So a link to Pocket ID's documentation is in my documentation page as well. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to go to client examples. I have some examples here, which is good. So we want to do Grafana, right? So what we're going to do is just follow these steps here. So what we're going to do is want to create a new OIDC client. So we'll come back here and we'll go add client and we'll give it a name and we'll call it Grafana. And now it's saying set the callback URL to the you know the url of our grafana instance with this uh, trailing path here and then copy the client id secret and authorization url and token url for the next steps so what that means is i'm going to hit save here and that will give me the client id and client secret so what we need to do now is we need to log into grafana and start setting up saying telling grafana we want to use a different authentication method so we're going to go to administrator and then authentication and then it's generic OAuth. So we're going to click here. And now it needs a client ID. So we can copy that there. And we'll paste that in. We need that client secret. So we'll copy that. We'll paste that in. So now we can just save the settings. So we'll go save and enable. There we go. And it says it's enabled now. Right, so now I've just opened up a private tab. We're going to go back to Grafana. 
as if you know there's no case or anything i just want to show you we're going to try access this now so we're going to sign in with oauth and now it's saying here sign into grafana do you want to sign into grafana with your tiktok's id account i'm going to hit sign in now it's called tiktok's id because remember we changed the name so i'm going to click sign in now it's asking me for an authentication method so let's try my finger there we go i've touched it hands are away i'm not typing anything Grafana wants access to following information, email and profile. There we go. And we've signed in. So just like that, that's how we can sign in to Grafana using no password. And now we've logged in. So you can see that it's that admin at admin.com. So any user we make now within the pocket ID and we give it access, we can log into Grafana. So for example, we have one called Bob here that I've just made, Bob Smith. Now, if they wanted to log in, you'd log in to the Pocket ID, you'll set up their hardware keys, and then when they go to log in, they can log into any apps you give them access to, and then that's how you do it. There's no username, there's no password, they just set up their hardware keys and away they can go and log in. So thank you so much for watching. That is Pocket ID. It's awesome. It gets rid of the whole password needing things and we're switching the pass keys. Pass keys are becoming very popular and a lot of applications are now supporting pass keys as well. So you can use your hardware key for a lot of things. This just helps, you know, a lot of those applications that you're setting up that you can set up your own OWASP uh, authentication. You can just use your Pocket ID and continue using your hardware keys. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the patience as well. I know I've been away. I've just, to be honest, I just couldn't be really be bothered looking at a computer screen for the last like month. So uh, I'm back in now. So yeah. Anyway, thank you so much. Now, a link to the documentation is in the description. If you have any trouble trying to connect or set up anything, jump into the Discord. Again, a link is also in the description. More than keen to help you out. And uh, yeah, we can go from there. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you do try out Pocket ID and how you find it. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.